USC will get the football first. And we will see Brian Mallett. That was in question. The freshman quarterback will give it a go tonight. Joseph Bullivus puts the football on a tee. Marquez Callaway is back deep for Tennessee. 15 minutes on the clock, quarter number one. We start 0-0 and underway from T-Town. And it's a short kick from Callaway from the three. Ty Chandler able to return and doesn't get the yardage he would like. Kahu on the special team stop. And Tennessee will start with difficult field position. Last week, Brian Maurer left the game after he flipped over and landed on his head. Managed to stay in for a couple more plays. Throw a red zone interception. Was taken out of the game. Concussion protocol all week. He has been cleared, ready to go. Coaching staff said he took all the snaps he needed to take this week. Not that he took all the snaps, but all the ones he needed to take. And on first down, Ty Chandler not going anywhere. It's a loss of one. Anthony Jennings on to make the stop. This is a heck of an environment for a true freshman quarterback in Brian Maurer to come in and make this start on the road. This, this place is loud. The first night game of the season. They're in full lather, full throat. He's got to be careful here to start the game, not to give it away. Brian, we've been to 100 of these. But every single time you come to an SEC night game, you feel the difference. It's so different than anywhere else in the country. I can't imagine being a young quarterback here. Here's Maurer, pressure up the middle. And they screen right through the pressure. It's a gain of three on the play. It's Dominic Wood Anderson, and it brings up a third down. Yeah, Maurer lucky to get rid of that football. The blitzing linebacker right up the middle. He took a big shot. And right off the bat, first drive of the game, he's behind the sticks, third and seven. More pressure coming. Mauer gets rid of it down the sideline. One and Jawan Jennings can't find him. Shaheen Carter had the excellent coverage for Bama, and it's a three and out. Well, they found the matchup they like. Their best wide receiver, Jawan Jennings, on the nickelback, Shaheem Carter. That's a, a, a matchup that Tennessee likes. They think that's in their favor. Just a little bit overthrown. Jalen Waddell leads the nation in punt return yardage. Last week, he returned four punts for an average, an average of 32 yards. Return game was on the money for Alabama a week ago. There is a flag down. Substitution infraction, offense, 12 players in the formation, five yard penalty, fourth down. Hubert Owens, our referee tonight. The ball spotted at the 12. Joe Doyle, the walk on punter. We'll see if they decide to punt to Jalen Waddle. If it were me, I would not punt to him. Low snap. Doyle gets it away. Short kick. Waddle on the Tennessee side of the field. Comes to the near side and down the sideline. It's a 37-yard punt, a 14-yard return, and to a tongue of my low up, Todd McShay will start with excellent field position. Yeah, he's in a good spot here as he usually is with these wide receivers. But to a talk to general managers scouting directors for college for nfl teams that are scouting college they're all here to see the wide receivers so much talent for alabama but two is the guy he's the next quarterback we've heard about tanking for Tua. the miami dolphins potentially getting him at the number one overall pick bottom line is this guy has supreme talent and he's the most accurate downfield passer in all of college football from the 35 he's going to throw quick Slant in the middle of Jerry Judy. They get Judy involved quickly. And why not? This has been their number one play all season. It's the run pass option or RPO. Stick the ball in Najee Harris' belly. And when the defense sucks in, they hit the slant behind the Judy. From the 16. 
This time on the ground, Harris keeps it in his belly. And he's down to the 10-yard line. DeAndre Johnson to stop for Tennessee. The 16th drive started in their opponent's territory on the plus side of the field so far this season for Alabama. Drive started at the 35 of Tennessee. You got some more flags. False start, offense, number 74. Five drive penalty, second down. And this is uncharacteristic for the number one team in the country. They're the most penalized team in the SEC. Yeah, that's Jedrick Wills, the right tackle. Uh, with the false start, I think it's worth mentioning that Nick Saban has decided to go with Landon Dickerson, the, the transfer from Florida State, as his starting center. He did it last week when Chris Owens was hurt. Now he's back healthy, but Dickerson stays at center, and Deontay Brown's the starting right guard. From the 15 now, Tungabaloa, straight drop, throws, end zone, trying to find Henry Ruggs, looking for a flag. Bryce Thompson on the coverage. There is a flag down. It looked like Bryce Thompson had a tug of the jersey of Ruggs. Passing affairs. Defense, number 20. Foul occurred in the end zone. The ball is placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Thompson's in good position. He just doesn't need to grab the jersey and pull on Ruggs. Right here, you see that left hand up on... Right there, he's got like a little horse collar, and that's, that's going to be called every time. You can't use the offensive player to catapult yourself up to make a play. So that's a 13-yard penalty at half the distance to the goal. It is first down and goal from the two. Rugs in a slot. Tonga Bailoa hands off to Harris. He'll fall forward. Maybe a yard on the play. Sean Schamberger made the stop. This is a Tennessee defense that's going to play the first half of this game without one of their best linebackers, and Henry To'o To'o. He was uh, at a targeting foul last game, so he's out the first half of this one. And on the offensive side, Alabama without Devontae Smith retaliated from a punch last week. He'll miss the first half. Two tight ends, two backs in for Alabama. That's Harris, bottom of your screen. Tonga Bailoa, back of the end zone. Incomplete, but a flag flies in. Miller Forrestal, the tight end, couldn't haul it in. Nigel Warrior had the coverage, and I believe we'll get our second pass interference This goal. was a great read from Nigel Warrior. It's just bad execution. He's in good Holding position. On. Defense. On an eligible receiver doing a legal forward pass play. Half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. And this is such a different Alabama offense than we're used to seeing. I mean, you, in the days days of old, they would just line up and pound this ball in. They're not a great running football team. This is a pass-first football team for Alabama, and we're seeing it here down inside the two-yard line. Ali Cajo to lead block for Najee Harris. Touchdown. They bring the big fella in, and Alabama an opportunity to use those new fancy lights. So many ways that Nick Saban gets production. Tennessee comes out, they go three and out, and then they punt the ball to Jalen Waddle, which I think is a mistake, and he returns it back to the 35-yard line, and that's, that's operating downhill for this offense. Kicking game has been a problem. Bullivus able to connect on the extra point. First possession for Alabama with a short field. Leads to a long touchdown. Over there, I think. Now, no, either down there. Ty Chandler from a six after another short kick, and Chandler out to the 20 yard line. Seems like Nick Saban only, only lets you leave if he knows he can beat you. 
his extensive coaching tree. A lot of quality assistants go on to be head coaches. They all have one thing in common. They can't beat their former boss. Nick is 18-0 against his former assistants. Jeremy Pruitt is hanging around tonight. He's already 0-1 entering this game here. I mean, he knows all their secrets, Keith. <laughs> but you would think they would know his, too. Might have something to do with some good players. Oh, yeah. talent. Here's Jennings on the receiving end. Five will give him on the plate on forward progress. And if you look at the assistants, I mean, really, Kirby Smart has been the closest to being the first assistant to beat him. It was 2018, the last national championship game. That was 26-23, Bama in overtime. And last season, the SEC championship game, Bama won by seven. But the 16 lost by 17 or more points. So Kirby's come the closest to figuring it out, or he has the best players. <laughs> One of the two. On second and five, here's Tim Jordan with a good run and a first down. Matt Barry. Guys, Kansas has never gone to Texas and beat the Longhorns. Here, Carter Stanley. Good throw to give Kansas the lead. However, Texas just kicked the field goal over tied at 24 in the third. Leave it. Good one there. A highly entertaining college football Saturday. So far, we'll see what develops here tonight in Tuscaloosa. Here's Maurer to throw. Trying to slant of his own. He's intercepted. It's picked off by Jared Maiden. Off the hands of Jawan Jennings. And then Maiden able to take it away. Turnover, Tennessee. Boy, and if you thought you were going to get a turnover, you would not expect it to come from Jawan Jennings. He's their most consistent player. That ball was thrown perfectly. A big hit by Xavier McKinney forced that ball out. And this Alabama defense, we've known them for years to force the issue on offenses. And on the second drive, they take one away. Just when Tennessee thought they were clicking a little bit, had the first down, building a little confidence. So they start at the 35 of Tennessee the first time, and now the 38-yard line of the Vols. Off the play fake. Tongue of Iloa. Offer Harris out of the backfield. Stays on his feet for the first down. And he's inside the 25. Gain of 14 on the play. That was a, a, they wanted to throw the haymaker there with Tua downfield. Quick change. They, they ran a double, they a double move, right, and wasn't open. Jennings, no, he gave up an opportunity here, giving Alabama the ball plus territory. And Jennings was the one who told Molly earlier this week yep. that Alabama was different. Not the same kind of Alabama that's going to blow the doors off of everybody in the SEC and around the country. Tunga Bailoa to Henry Ruggs. He is met immediately. Bryce Thompson, excellent tackle for a loss of two. Well, make no mistake, Jawan Jennings is the emotional leader of this Tennessee team. So, you know, he's trying to fire his team up. And last thing he wants to do is come out, juggle the ball, and turn it over. But you get in this environment, right, uh, against a team that's got more talent than you, and you can't afford any missteps, especially on the first two drives. Molly's report resonated around the country. It was one of the big news stories to come out of UCLA Stanford. They were talking about Tennessee and Alabama. Tunga by Lowe. The Harris again out of the backfield. Similar play. Banged out at about the 20 yard line. Molly. Well, Steve Juwan Jennings just walked up and down the entire line, apologizing individually to each one of his offensive teammates. And he just went into Brian Mauer's ear and was talking to him. So he's taking responsibility and accountability for his mistake early in this game. I love this kid. I mean, you talk to the coaching staff, and they bring up his name. He's the toughest competitor on this entire team, one of the toughest players on the team. Jim Chaney loves him. Jeremy Pruitt, the same. Chaney said, give me 40 guys, just like Jennings. I'll take them. Third down and three. Tunga by Loa underneath crossing to Jerry Judy. First down and maybe more. Down to the two. That's where Bryce Thompson dropped him. Gain of 15. You know, a lot of people talk about Jerry Judy down the field, double moves, slants. This is just a shallow cross, and he's the third read in the progression. They wanted to get the ball to waddle downfield. He didn't like it. How nice as a quarterback to dump it down three yards on a crossing route to that man. 
First down and goal. From the two. Tonga by Lowe to throw for it. Gets some pressure. He's all the way back to the 20. Throws and it's intercepted at the goal line. Intercepted by Nigel Warrior. Down the sideline. Running out of gas. And he'll be taken down by Henry Ruggs. The fastest man on the field. It's a pick at the goal line by the senior Nigel Warrior and a 60-yard interception return. Tua Tungabailoa has thrown 27 touchdowns this season alone. He's only thrown one interception. Now this is the second, and it's clearly a bad decision. You want him to make a play. You want, to, you want to throw the ball in the end zone, but you also want to be smart. And when you get in this situation, you're trying to make a play, and see where he throws this football, there's just no chance of completing that ball. Here's Maurer with a second crack at it on the Alabama side of the field. Down to the 40, gain of one from Tim Jordan. And the happiest guy in the building on the turnover. <laughs> Jawan Jennings. That takes a load off your shoulders, right? I mean, all right, let me put my helmet back on. Let's go do something. They're going to come out and make make up for it. If I'm Jim Chaney, I'm getting him right back into this game. Yeah, he bobbled the last one, but I know I need number 15 if we're going to compete in this ball game. Mauer, designed quarterback draw. It's a loss of two on the play. Terrell Lewis made the stop and Raekwon Davis the assist as well you know Raekwon he's had a, a silent year he hasn't been the, the game record that we anticipated him to be that's a mix up up front with the offensive line they don't even block him but Raekwon Davis came back because he wanted to atone for last year he felt like he wasn't himself he kind of was, thought he'd made it ready to go to the NFL he came back for this year to atone for last year and he's starting to warm up and he got caught listening to some rat poison. Here's third and ten. Mauer to throw for it. Back shoulder. It is caught. There is a flag down. Josh Palmer has it and has it up for the first down. It's a gain of 20. We'll check the marker. I don't think Hubert Hubert knows that uh, there's a flag down on the near side of on the 40 yard line. Defense number 99. Penalty was refused. Result of the play is a first down. Really nice throw from Brian Maurer. He's been on target. Yeah, the last one was dropped for the interception, not his fault. But this time, a back shoulder throw to Palmer shows you a little bit of the of the free spirit. He's a freewheeling kind of guy. His offensive coordinator, Jim Cheney, we talked to him last night. He, he said it seven times. Free spirit. <laughs> he did in about ten minutes. Two tight ends in for Tennessee. Maurer off the play fake. Try to get a little too cute. Try to hit Dominic Wood Anderson. And it's going to be a penalty. And the holding. Let's see if that goes also against Alabama. Yeah, they're trying to get the ball to the tight end. And Terrell Lewis came upfield and kind of grabbed him with his arm. I think that's what they're talking about here. Holding defense number 24, 10 yard penalty. After the penalty, it was a first down. Yeah, it wasn't much from Terrell Lewis, but it was a, it was a little bit. He's coming up field, and now he recognizes, oh, I have that guy in coverage. I'm supposed to knock off the tight end, and he just grabs his arm a little bit, a little bit. But if, when that happens on the edge of the formation, that that lines when he sees that. And, Three penalties against Alabama so far, only two accepted if they were penalized 11 times a week ago. Tennessee has to make Alabama pay here. About a 14 point swing potential. Now, Jordan in the flat. He's going to lose some yards. Christian Harris is the first man there, the true freshman, to make the stop. And another marker. The back judges, this flag came in late. Holding. 
offense. Number 15, 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Jawan Jennings up and down. Night continues. Yeah, not the kind of start that, uh, that Jawan wanted to have. Penalties in the red zone. Jeremy Pruitt knows that's a killer. Got a lot of young players out here, but Jawan Jennings is not one of them. They're starting. He played 21 freshmen. That's a that's a lot of young players. 110 players on the roster. Greece. 80 are freshmen or sophomore. This is his actual first full recruiting class on the field here tonight for Pruitt. Good protection. Mauer zips it into Jennings. Went up and caught it. And he's taken down inside the five-yard line. It's a gain of 18 on the play. First things first, you got to have a great pocket and give Tennessee's offensive line credit. Watch him up front. Great job. And then just a double move. Look at that move right there from Jawan Jennings. Gets the linebacker. That matchup on a linebacker, a true freshman in Christian Harris on Jawan Jennings. Nick Saban is not going to want to see that again. It's a nice job by Maurer, too, hanging in there, knowing that he had protection and going through his progressions. Really impressive for a young quarterback in this environment. They can still get a first down without scoring. First carry for Eric Gray. Terrell Lewis made the stop at the one. You'll see the spot on the imaginary yellow line, which is unofficial, as always. I think they're going to take a second and, and measure this. If I'm Jeremy Prude, I'd love them for them to measure this because. You know, if you go back and run this again and, and get stopped for negative yardage, then you're in a, a bad situation. So change your play calling completely if you got a first down inside the one. Good chance, though, also for Mauer to take a couple deep breaths here. I think Mauer. I mean, he's looked he's looked fine to me. You know that that interception is not on him. He's thrown the ball accurately. I don't. I didn't anticipate coming into this game that that this stage was going to be too big for him. I know he's a freshman. Came up just short there, but. Just watching him on tape, talking with Jim Chaney, uh, they feel really good about the prospects of Brian Maurer. Yes, he's going to be up and down as a true freshman, but he is not going to blink. Doesn't have any issue pulling the trigger and, and throwing balls, anticipating throws, standing in the pocket, running, and, and uh, there seem to be no signs of the concussion from a week ago. So not a first down. Third and one. Maurer. Did he get there waiting for the signal? Still no signal, which means no touchdown. I think that was a touchdown. A anybody see anybody put any arms yeah. in the air? The head linesman down here on this side was the one that, that should have seen it on the left side. He clearly gets into the end zone right there. He's not on the ground. He's on top of, of players. That's that's a great look. Clear touchdown. What a drive, what an answer. The mistake by Tua Tunga Vailoa is a 14 point swing early in this game. Extra point. On the way and good. 421 to go here in the first. Tennessee's not going to go easily into the night. <laughs> Peyton went three and one against Alabama. His only loss was 17-13 his freshman year. And a really short kick, the up man. And again, Bama's going to take over with ridiculous field position to start. Major Tennyson, the tight end. Well, I think that has a lot to do with Jeremy Pruitt and his respect for the special teams of Alabama, right? Jalen Waddle, Henry Ruggs, both dangerous returners. And we talk for Alabama all about the offense. We talked defense the last five, ten years. The special teams this year, I believe, are a real difference maker for them. Bama had 311 return yards last week. After a punt return or a kick return, their average starting field position was at the Texas A&M 41-yard line. Well, Jalen Waddle had 128 return yards in the punt game. So far today, the average starting field position is even better than that. And that's Najee Harris out to nearly midfield for a gain of 14 on first down. I think one of the goals for Alabama offensively, and Steve Sarkeesian talking with him yesterday, for them tonight on offense is to get this run game going. 
He feels like they need to be more physical in the run game. Najee Harris, with his size at 230 pounds, they should be getting more production in their run game, and they need that because they are a run and play action team, and if they're not running it successfully, then the play action suffers. Here's Harris. They had set Waddle in motion. It's the thing that stands out to me the most when just watching tape and studying coming into this week. It, this offense is so prolific in terms of the passing game. Two obviously so accurate as a passer. The three receivers are as good as any trio in the country. But Alabama usually can just line up and run the football. And it's not the same this year. That's been the biggest difference to me watching them. And I think that's where they have to improve the most. Yeah, they're eighth in the SEC alone running the football. And I think some of it is they're so good throwing it. Why, why wouldn't they throw it? That's fair. Harris up the middle. I mean, if we were if we were up here talking about how they were running the ball 50-50 run to pass, we'd be like, why yeah. aren't they giving the ball to these receivers more? So, guys, can you understand how preposterous that would sound, though, like to the rest of college football? Hey, Bama's still working on the running game. Like, that, <laughs> right? you're not getting a whole lot of sympathy from anybody else. No, but I, I do think it is something that matters to Nick Saban. Uh, he knows that he wanted to have more offense after what happened last year in the national championship game They needed to have more offense and but it starts with them running the football first down and ten Tonga by low at a throw Crossing is Henry Ruggs He's out of the 25 after a game of 18 Great patience in the pocket from Tua this is what excites everybody about this young man. His patience, he doesn't flinch, he won't hesitate, throw that ball with anticipation outside the numbers. He knows exactly where these routes should be completed. And outside of that one interception, typically he's a great decision maker. See that picture of two. He's got an easy smile, right? An easy way about him. He's so humble. Confident, humble, and a terrific teammate. Harris running, taken down. A couple of flags fly. It's a gain of five if it stands. So we come up on two minutes left in this first quarter. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense, number 35. Half a distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. That's Daniel Batuli. One of the senior leaders on this Tennessee defense. Yeah, Petuli coming off of a knee scope. Good to see him back out there playing. And just an unfortunate to come up and hit somebody like that. I guarantee you, you're not really that worried about where your hand is. Okay? You just butted heads with a fullback. And that's just a little bit of bad luck for Petuli. But he's an outstanding football player. Jeremy Prude has built this front seven around him and Daryl Taylor, both seniors. Petuli missed the first half of this game in Knoxville a year ago after a targeting penalty the previous game. Brian Robinson taking on contact and the pylon. Yes, that foot was in, ball hit the pylon. Left foot is inbounds. Great effort from Robinson and a great block on the end of line of scrimmage by the tight end Miller Forrestall to seal it and let Robinson get to the corner. First carry of the night for Brian Robinson. It's quite the success. And that drive is a perfect example of, of what Alabama wants to be running the football, being powerful, and then the play action completion from Tua and then more physical run game inside the tent. And Bulovas has been perfect on extra points. He's two for two tonight. And that'll come as a welcome relief for the Alabama faithful. Up 14-7. 70-27 in the first quarter coming into play tonight. And now, from plan to play, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Yeah, let's take a look at young Brian Maurer, the true freshman, how he's operating here on the road at Brian Denny. Great communication here with the receiver, the back shoulder throw on Diggs, who's an excellent, excellent corner. When you give him some time in the pocket and you give Juwan Jennings an opportunity to work down the field, that's great, great job, great accuracy, getting that touchdown. And then you see a little bit of that free spirit on the sideline. As a true freshman, it's hard to come in and be a leader, but this kid has some juice to him. There's something about him that his teammates respond to. 
see if he can put back to back drives together here for Tennessee. Fourth possession of the quarter for Tennessee. And they jump. False start. Offense. Number 64. Five drive penalty. First down. That's Wanye Morris, the true freshman from Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, Brian Mauer's got to be aware. He's got two true freshman tackles. Wanye Morris on the left side and Darnell Wright on the right side, number 72. These guys are going to be great players. They're just young. They have a lot of talent. They're highly recruited kids. Uh, but coming into this environment with this noise and the pass rushers that Alabama has, that's a task. And Wanye's a five-star guy. Little pump and completion to Jenkins. And there's a flag down. Couple of flags down. And Brian Maurer slow to get up, oh if at all. Well, Maurer, remember, had the concussion a week ago. He took a shot high late. I've never seen a player so Personal quickly foul look over to the sideline. Targeted. Defense, number 35. 15 yards added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. The previous play is under further review. That's Shane Lee, Alabama's own true freshman who's talented. And right now, it's all about Brian Maurer. Took a scary hit. Throws this ball and then watch watch the hit up high and then the back of his head hits the knee of his offensive lineman. That's what got him. The Home Depot's making finding your color easier than ever. Whatever inspires you, discover the perfect color with popular palettes online. Get free delivery on samples and convenient new paint selection tools in store. Get a colorful new experience and everything you'll need, like gallons of Glidden Premium Interior, now just $18.98. The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. The Goodyear blimp doesn't show up for just anybody. So don't be just anybody. Be blimp worthy. Goodyear. More driven. Introducing Target Circle, a more rewarding target run. With deals and surprises, it's free to join. You'll score more and help support your community. You're invited to Target Circle. A more rewarding target run is waiting for you. After review, the ruling of targeting has been reversed. There was not forcible contact. Number 35 remains in the game. First down. So you'll see it again here. And after one replay, you could see this is clearly not targeting. It's really a shove, but it's the back end. Maurer falling and Darnell Wright, his own right tackle there on top of his head. Yeah, and immediately you saw Brian Myers, Maurer signal the sideline to, to come get him. So Jared Garantano, uh, like he did a week ago in the ballgame. Garantano's made 22 career starts. The lights will not be too bright for him. Tim Jordan for a yard. And just to refresh uh, from a week ago, playing against Mississippi State, he took this wicked hit, went down awkward. And he stayed in the game. He got up, stayed in the game after that for a couple more plays, threw an interception in the end zone, and then Jeremy Pruitt pulled him out. And he was diagnosed with a concussion. And to have another shot on his head in back-to-back -back weeks, that's scary. And I think they'll be really careful I don't expect him to come back in this football game Molly will get us a report as soon as it becomes available final 30 seconds of the first quarter Garantano to throw hooks up with Jennings going to be short of the marker Jared Maiden who had an earlier interception makes the tackles a game seven now you, you wonder about Jared Garantano. Like where is his confidence? You know, he, he was the starter, had a great spring, great fall camp. Jeremy Pruitt was excited. Jim Cheney excited to see what Jared Garantano could do. And he didn't play well. He didn't play well enough through the first four games of the season. And he was benched in favor of Brian Maurer. And now it looks like this is his ball game. So we'll see if, if he'll be up to the task. That's Maurer just out of the tent. Again, as soon as a report becomes available, Molly will have it for you. An eventful first 15 in Tuscaloosa.
Get the rich, bold flavor only found in the original Donut Shop coffee. Just reach for the teal. Keeping the night interesting is all about setting the right tone. Lower carbs, lower calories, higher expectations. The light beer you've been waiting for has arrived. Corona Premier. In 1979, Jiffy Lube changed everything by providing the first convenient oil change service. Seriously. Four decades later, Jiffy is changing everything again, offering services that are fast and convenient using manufacturer recommendations. Jiffy Lube, you can do more in a Jiffy. Every cop and criminal in this city is coming for her. So what you gonna do? I'm gonna expose him. You are a strong woman. You have no idea. Black and blue. Rated R. You gotta be over there, I think, now. No, these are down there. This is the spot right here. Not sure about this? We're good. We're really close. Check it out, Vin. Yeah. The more challenging the journey, the more satisfying the rewards. Experience capability crafted by Lexus. The new GX and incomparable LX. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Traditional banks. Seems like some are going at the speed of yesteryear, but not here. This is Capital One where banking moves at the speed of right now. You can open a new savings account in about five minutes and earn five times the national average from here or here in our cafes. Plus, there are no fees or minimums on savings or checking accounts. Welcome to banking's new frontier. This is Banking Reimagined. What's in your wallet? Rated M for mature. Targets are up. This is crazy. Yeah, but we're a little crazy, aren't we? On my mark, three, two, one. Bravo six, going dark. Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Pre-order now. Today's theme song. You only get so many firsts in life, Lisa, and this bite of Wingstop is one of them. This is where lemon and pepper get a buttery bath where 11 flavors each go to 11. Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. Are you ready for Monday night? Welcome back to Tuscaloosa, where quarterback Brian Maurer looked days when he left Tennessee's medical tent and head coach Jeremy Pruitt talked to Maurer very closely. I don't know what he said, but Maurer looked very upset and was escorted back to the locker room without his helmet, Steve. That was a one-way conversation, Molly. I can tell you exactly what he said. Listen, kid, you're done. Go hit the showers. <laughs> End of story. Yeah, you don't mess around with, you know, head injuries and back-to-back -back weeks. Back-to-back, -back, yeah. Tim Jordan on third and one gets the first down for Tennessee. Jared Garantano, I told you, made 22 starts. Would it surprise you that he has the second best completion percentage all time in Tennessee's program history? Behind only Peyton. Is this your graphic? <laughs> was it? What, what do you mean it was my graphic? Yeah, that's something that it's, you would put together. It's our graphic. Yeah, Pey Peyton and I didn't see that graphic. You put Peyton and Jared on the same graphic? It's our graphic. It's team game, Greece. <laughs> Numbers don't lie. We, we used to have a TV show. It's called that. On first down and 10. Over the head of Juwan Jennings. Here's All the right. thing about Jared Garantano, okay? I mean, you can put any graphic you want with a completion percentage. This is a kid that needs to relax. He wants to be, he wants to be great. He's a great kid, and he wants to be the Tennessee quarterback, and he wants to do it well for Jeremy Pruitt, but he just hasn't produced. And we talked with Jeremy Pruitt yesterday. He said, listen, the kid was throwing interceptions. Jim Cheney said he was changing plays when it didn't make sense to change plays. He wasn't playing the position well. Now, hopefully he has another opportunity here and he plays better. Big run by Tim Jordan down the sideline. That's the burst that Tennessee needed. It's a gain of 33, and there are no flags. They got to run the football. I mean, Tennessee, they have to go behind this big offensive line. Trey Smith, the left guard, a great block on D.J. Dale. 
and that opens up that hole on the left side, but they have to run the football to have any chance tonight. Did you see the field judge, Greg Thomas, go down on the sideline there. See if Greg's okay. Tim Jordan in the backfield. Jarrett Garantano. Garantano will keep it and spin around for a gain of two. Well, when we talked with Jim Chaney, the offensive coordinator, he talked about this offensive line, and he felt like potentially coming into the season, there's Jim, that this was going to be a problem, a worry area, the offensive line. But he said, yeah, last night, he said, you know what? The offensive line has played good enough. It really has been the, the poor quarterback play. He's excited about the youth that they have up front. They've got two true freshmen, and uh, they've got to reestablish a line of scrimmage here tonight. From the Bama 18. Garantano to throw. Try to zip it in a Callaway. And there are flags down. Patrick Sertan on the coverage for the Crimson Tide. Now this is the same play Alabama runs all the time to Jerry Judy and it's so hard to defend for a corner because he's on the outside and he has to play through the receiver. Defense number two. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. It's almost impossible with an accurate throw and a good route for a corner to break up that play and not have pass interference. Yeah, and everyone standing behind me is miserable right now regarding that call but he earned it. Sertan earned it. He, you can't have your arm wrapped around the wide receiver the way that number two did. First and goal from the Alabama five. Jordan's big run of 33 yards setting things up. They motioned Garantano out and they were getting ready to go wildcat with Ty Chandler. Jeremy Pruitt won't be happy about this because now Nick Saban knows exactly what he's trying to do offensively. He just tipped his hand. Just, he's not happy. He said, like, we're just going to reset the 25-second clock. And I agree with him. Yeah, tried to catch Bama's defense by yeah, surprise. Right. Like, so why'd they please, shut it please down? Please give me an explanation. Because we're in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> now he's just going to line up in it. Forget that's, it. that's an explanation. That's Garantano. Bottom of your screen. You can see if Darnell Wright jumped. False start. Offense. Number 72. Five yard penalty. Second down. That's the other true freshman. The right tackle, Darnell Wright. Well, that's the one risk you take when you take the quarterback out of the snap pr procedure. You put in Tim Jordan, who snaps his hands and it's not coordinated, and you get an offsides. Seventh penalty against Tennessee already. We're two minutes into the second quarter. Garantano out of the gun. Jennings in a slot. They'll run it with Tim Jordan. And he'll be pushed back. With no gain on forward progress. Christian Harris and Raquan Davis for Alabama. Yeah, and Alabama defensively is playing man-to-man -man coverage on the outside, and they're stacking the box. Tennessee's gotten down here predominantly on the ground. They are not going to let them run this ball into the end zone. The game plan for Nick Saban will be pretty clear. Force Jarrett Garantano to make the read and make the throw to get it in the end zone. And Jeremy Pruitt was really upset. He just yelled at Garantano, throw the ball. What are you doing? Ninth play of the drive. See if he throws it this time. Flag comes in. Garantano throws it. It is dropped. Couple of flags down. Austin Pope was the intended target. We have three flags on the field. And that was with the outfield, number 62 on the offense, penalties decline. Holding, number 72 on the offense, that penalties decline. Holding, number 74 on the offense, the 10-yard penalty. <laughs> Replay the down. Now, you don't see that every day. 
three different penalties on the offense. How do you decide which one to choose? <laughs> and how in the world is this play not successful? You held three guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's because Austin Pope dropped the ball. Wow, they had first down inside the five yard line, and now they're second down at the 20. Yeah, this has blown up in Jeremy Pruitt's face, and he probably deserves a better fate. And he better be careful on that sideline. Wearing out is welcome. The former Alabama coordinator and player. Garantano for the end zone. Into double coverage and over Marquez Callaway's head. Sertan and McKinney in the neighborhood. Now you got to be careful here if, if you're Jim Cheney. I know you want to you get the touchdown, but you got three points potentially. But if Jared Garantano tries to force this ball, look at Sertan. He's just measuring it up. If that ball was accurate to the receiver, it would have been an interception. Third and goal from the 20. Garantano off the bench. I'm going screen here. Preserve the field goal attempt. Garantano wants more. And overthrew Jennings. He had him, and he missed him. Fourth down. Wow, I'm shocked that Alabama decided to play man-to-man -man coverage. And Garantano, they got exactly the matchup they wanted. Jennings on Shaheem Carter. Look at this double move. And they get Carter. And this could have been a touchdown if it was an accurate throw. <laughs> got to give him a chance in that scenario. Brent Samalaga on for a 37 yard field goal attempt right through the uprights Samaglia boots it through the most accurate kicker in the SEC 12 of 13 on the season not sure anyone expected this game to be so close even with 12 minutes left the second quarter as we continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week I mean, Dr. Pepper obviously knew they made it the championship drive game of the week. They knew. Paxton Brooks does the kickoffs for Tennessee. And Henry Ruggs in the end zone for the touchback. Take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by AT&T. So what jumps off the page to me right away is I still can't get used to the three next to Clemson. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little weird, right? We haven't seen Clemson in that spot. But then you look at Wisconsin going down to Illinois today. Good job by Lovey. Yeah, give, right? Lovey, give Lovey Smith credit. Uh, he, he felt like they had a chance. And now back-to-back -back weeks where somebody in the top ten goes down. Last week, Georgia. And this week, Wisconsin. You better show up at college football. You can't take a Saturday off, you know that. Here's Tunga Bailoa. Across the middle of Forrestall, the tight end. And he's got first down yards. We'll give him 14 on the play. We saw the opener against Duke in Atlanta. Alabama won that game 42 to 3. And Miller Forrestal caught his first ever reception. It's a touchdown catch against those Blue Devils. I thought it was interesting talking with Steve Sarkeesian and, and with Tua Tungabailoa yesterday. And Steve Sarkeesian, I think, has been great for Tua. He's given him the NFL treatment, giving him the hardest looks he possibly can every single practice. Sometimes they're practicing stuff that they know they're not going to see, but just trying to get him ready for anything. Loading up and firing for Jerry Judy. No, I beg your pardon. It's Ruggs and Judy in the neighborhood, and Ruggs runs underneath. Look at this speed on the outside. Just a double post, and it's a breakdown in the secondary for Tennessee. Whether it was Thompson, that was like catching a punt out there. But Thompson 20 was trying to, to signal to the safety, hey, you got these guys, but if you have Judy and Ruggs running one-on-one -on, -one on a safety, somebody's busted. And just like that, it's a gain of 48. And Bama's in business at the 13 of Tennessee. Harris on the ground. Tennessee stops that run. This Kavon the, Bennett, the stop, it's a loss of three on the play, but Tooley there as well. This offense is good enough, right? You can't help them. And in the secondary, if you're going to have busts, this team is going to make you pay. And it's hard enough to guard Judy and Ruggs and Smith 
uh, when, when you have the right assignment, but that breakdown in the secondary for, for Jeremy Pruitt just made it too easy. So much talent at the wide receiver spot for Alabama. Second and 13. Tunga Bailoa underneath the cross to Brian Robinson, the running back. He's down to the seven, but truly the stop there and the gain of eight. And again, that, we ask the question, well, why don't they run the football more? Because they, the passing game is so outstanding for Alabama. But there will be a time where they'll need to sure. run the football and squeeze some clock as well. Sure there will. This offensive line, you know, Todd doesn't think they're great running the football, but they've been pretty good in pass pro. That's that's for sure. And I, I get it. Tennessee doesn't have a, a really elite pass rusher, but right now, Tua Tungavailoa is really comfortable in the pocket. Send all emails to me, please. That's at Todd McShay. Tungavailoa underneath. It's Judy trying to dive for the goal line. He's short. But Thule put the helmet in there along with Nigel Warrior to gain a seven. That was a big hit from Batuli. Watch number 35, the linebacker comes in, and Judy's trying to get that nose to the to the end zone, and that's a clean hit from Batuli, and that is going to leave a mark on Jerry Judy. He's quick, fast, elusive, but he's not the biggest of receivers at 190 pounds, and hopefully he's okay. The Bolitnikoff Award winner from last season is the Best wide receiver in the nation. He's struggling to get off the field, too. It was a tough one to see. Yeah. And Nick Saban. The runner on the over. field is that the bar carry was down short of the goal line. The previous player is under further review. And Nick Saban went straight over to Jerry Judy and wants to assess for himself how he's functioning, much like Jeremy Pruitt did with Brian Maurer as a head coach in college football. When your guys take a, a, a wicked hit and there's any question, first thing head coaches should do is is get over there, look in the eyes, and and make make the uh, determination yourself. They're going to go back and take a look at this potentially for targeting on Batuli. See how his head goes down. Now that I watch that the second time, when that head goes down for Batuli, it doesn't matter where he hits him. That's targeting and that's what they want to get out of the game is that posture with the head. And Tennessee is already playing without Henry To'o To'o from a targeting call from a week ago who's an inside linebacker and if Batuli is thrown out of this game they won't have any starting inside backers. To'o To'o will come back for the second half. As Judy looks like that. That's more equipment than medical. Getting his helmet worked on. Matt Austin, former SEC referee. He's in Charlotte, our officiating analyst tonight. Matt, your thoughts? Yeah, Steve, I agree with you and Brian. I think number 35 came in. He definitely lowered his head. He definitely attacked. It looked to me like he had... Uh, crowd of the helmet contact to the back of the receiver's head that'll be the question though is did he hit him in the head uh, with the crowd of his helmet because number 18 is kind of in the way so it'd be interesting to see what replay comes up with but I think it's targeting yeah but Matt even if he hits him in the back right that posture with the crown of the helmet that's targeting. It doesn't matter if he hits him in the head that is that is very true but you can't really tell where he made contact but yeah. I, I do think it is targeting yeah, that's so the launch too the previous play was reviewed for targeted on 35 of the defense. That review has been confirmed. Number 35 committed target. Number 35 is disqualified. That's a tough blow for Daniel Batuli, who's the leader of this defense from that linebacker position. And I don't think that that was malicious uh, in any way, shape, or form. That's a good, hard football play, but they're trying to protect these defensive players and their necks in particular. And unfortunately, he's going to have to sit the rest of this one out. Enforced targeting calls are way down so far this season. 83 have been enforced. At this point last season, 122 targeting penalties are enforced. So the message is getting across. But it won't help Petulia or Tennessee here tonight. Solon Page checks in. 
as Najee Harris walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Tuli, the, yeah, the senior came over from uh, from Congo and he, he missed the first three games this season with a knee injury had a scope and finally got back out on the field and that's a tough loss a couple of years ago Batuli had a 100 yard interception return for a touchdown here and now he's gone yeah, that, that touchdown was set up by this breakdown in the secondary. You just can't have that. And despite this big hit, Alabama is still able to get in the end zone. Cats down by 58 with one minute left. Hey, where's everybody going? This game's not over. So we're not the best. Our kicker stubbed his toe on the ball, and pretty sure our mascot has his costume on backwards. But this, this is our team. No matter what. Why put another app on your phone? 50% off at Dave & Buster's when you download our app, that's why. Plus, charge your game card so no waiting, activate games, and more. The funnest app and 50% off games, only at Dave & Buster's. Discover automatically matches all the cash back you earn at the end of your first year. Dollar for dollar. Millions of people a year get their cash back matched. What are you waiting for? Unlimited cash back match, only from Discover. With Advil Liquid Gels, you have fast acting power over pain. So the whole world looks different. The unbeatable strength and speed of Advil Liquid Gels. What pain? So you're going to build a car to be Ferrari with a Ford. Correct. <laughs> they hate guys like us because we're different. What are they doing? Making your car go faster. That's more rocking! You got a plan? Tire is. No, I thought the whole point was to win the race. I don't speak Italian, but he ain't happy. Go to PG-13. New Michelin Endurance XT silicone wiper blades are engineered for extreme weather performance. With advanced QuadTech four-layer coated silicone that lasts two times longer than other blades and endures everything you put them through, only at Walmart. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Coca-Cola. Share a Coke this football season with your friends, family, and fans. And discover, we treat you like you treat you. And if you're going to pay for the new lights, Grease, you got to use them. Might as well use them. <laughs> you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Todd McShay, Molly McGrath, and our entire crew wishing you a happy Saturday night from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, home of the number one team in the land with a 21 10 lead. And Callaway up the sideline out to the 25. Here's Matt Barry. Steve, we've got an update for you on Penn State, Michigan. Penn State's defense had only allowed one rushing touchdown coming into the game. Zach Charbonnet now has two for Michigan. This is our AT&T best performance. And Penn State just up one touchdown in the third. Hey, Penn State can have their whiteout tonight. we got the laser light show here yeah. in Tuscaloosa. It is entertainment, Steve. We're in the entertainment business, Chris. How many times I got to tell you? <laughs> Entertain and inform. I'll be informing, I guess. Garantano tripped up as he throws. Anthony Jennings. It's an incomplete pass. Second down. Yeah, the only thing they're, they're discussing now is just, did this ball get back to the line of scrimmage? He's clearly outside the pocket. Garantano's trying to do everything he can to avoid the sack. And it does not get to the line of scrimmage in my eyes. That was about two yards behind the line of scrimmage. So it should be grounding. That's what they're talking about now. There's no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback was outside of the pocket, and the ball went beyond the line of scrimmage. 
So beyond the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it didn't look like beyond. Let's take another look. The ball was snapped on the 24. See where it goes out of bounds. See the official there. Goes right at the official. Goes behind the official. Yeah, looks short to me. Right? I mean, that was a pretty easy one because the official was standing right on the line where the ball was snapped. The, you had the, the marker on the sideline, and it clearly went behind the marker. Maybe they're still looking at it. We're wearing poor Hubert out tonight. Alrighty then. As you were, second and ten. On the ground, Tim Jordan. For about five, Christian Harris. They keep pushing the pile, no whistles, and that's a first down. That's an unbelievable run by Tim Jordan and all his friends. Jerome Carvin. A sophomore from Memphis pushing the pile. Right, we talked with Jim Cheney last night about Jordan. He said he loves him. He's just physical, downhill. And watch this offensive line, especially Trey Smith in there. Jerome Carvin pushing, as you mentioned. Impressive run. Garantano will take a shot. Now the right sideline for Josh Palmer. And a flag comes in. Trayvon Diggs on the coverage. Pass interference. Defense number seven. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, his right hand clearly had a hold of him. And the uh, nice call by the side judge seeing that. And that's, that's, that's just. Discipline by Trevon Diggs. I mean, Diggs is, is good enough. He's fast enough. He's tall enough. 6'2", 200 pounds. He's in great position. You just can't grab. And that's, I mean, listen, that's hard to do, to play one-on-one -on, -one on an island. But that was the right call. The younger brother of Stefan Diggs of the Minnesota Vikings. So at midfield, here come the Vols, trailing 21-10. Garantano to throw, and Pope could not haul that one in. Pope's been targeted a couple times tonight. Well, I think what you see from Alabama defensively, you know, they have the same issue. They have to defend the run pass option. That's what Tennessee does, much like Alabama does offensively. And the way that Nick Saban has decided to, to defend it is to play man to man. Every single time they throw that slant route, it's been tight coverage. Sometimes they've got the pass interference call, sometimes not. But either way, they're going to make it tough to complete that ball. And Maiden, the safety, has been great tonight in terms of his man-to-man -man coverage skills. Garantano. Ball comes out. Jennings had it, and then he didn't. And that's exactly what Todd was talking about. It's Jared Maiden that comes up and punches that football out, but it's another contested throw, slant round on the inside. Let him throw it, then come up and rip the football out. Watch number 21, the safety Maiden. He comes up and just punches it out right there. That's a great play. Garantano completed his first pass to Jennings. But since that, running on the field was a completed catch. The previous play is under further review. Garantano missed his nest six. And they're calling that a catch on the field for now. Yeah, that, that didn't look like a catch to me. You've been razor sharp tonight. <laughs> and you've already fired the, the, gra the graphics guy. It's the light show. Yeah. Oh, Probably. it is. And the undefeated Patriots head to MetLife Stadium to take on Le'Veon Bell and the J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Coverage kicks off Monday Night Countdown, 6 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Joe Namath jersey in the crowd, former Alabama great. Pretty happy your Jets got back into it, huh? What do you mean? Had it all the way. Yeah. C.J. Mosley coming back this week, too. All right. On third down and 10. Garantano trying to get out of there. Escapes somehow. Cuts up field. And he's taken down late as he hit the 50 by Christian Barmore. 
All of that for a gain of one fourth down. Great effort there by Barmore. You know, Alabama, believe it or not, they're trying to manufacture some pass rush. Nick Saban doesn't have as much pass rush as he would like. Now, last week, they finally got Terrell Lewis and Anthony Jennings on the field at the same time and were able to manufacture some pass rush. Lewis got two sacks a week ago, but Barmore is one of the guys they're trying to insert on the interior of this defensive line because they like his pass rush ability in third downs. Joe Doyle punted the first time for Tennessee for 36 yard punt. So they bring in Paxton Brooks to punt. And it's even worse. That's a 28 yard punt. Not sound in the kicking game, Matt Barry. Levy on the kicker side. I've got your AT&T best performance after the Michigan score. Here comes Penn State. Sean Clifford, KJ Hamler, 53 yards. Another beauty, 28-14. Penn State extends the lead again in the fourth. And really, those updates are for everyone else. We have that game on in the booth. You uh, want to talk about picture in picture, that's what we've got. That's a good picture for Alabama fans. Jerry Judy back out on the field. Great to see that he's back in the game. Bama will start from their own 21. Up 21-10. Tungo by Loa as the pocket collapses around him, and he's taken down. Greg Emerson with the sack. Trying to throw a double move on the inside of Jalen Waddle, and that's why Tua Tungabailoa holds it. See right here, there's, there's Waddle. He's double teamed, and that's why he holds it. That gives Emerson enough time to get Tungabailoa on the ground. Second career sack for the redshirt freshman from Jackson, Tennessee. Second and 15. That's Waddle in the backfield. Now Tungo by Lowe will throw to the right to Robinson. He's out to the 20, gain of five. Crouch to stop, and here's Molly. Well, Steve, after that hard hit on Jerry Judy, Tua Tunga Bailoa immediately went up to him and said, are you okay? And Judy nodded, said yes, explaining that the hit messed up his helmet, which has since, of course, been fixed, Steve. So more equipment than medical. It cost Patuli the game and the first half of next week's game against South Carolina. He went down awkward. I mean, it, that was more than a helmet issue. <laughs> It looked like he, he was kind of stunned there on the ground for a while, but good to see him back up. And that's that goes a long way, right? Like he's a tough, tough cookie. Third and ten. There are seven defenders, Greece, beyond the 30-yard line. They dropped everybody way back in coverage. The left game. Offense. Alabama called timeout prior to the delay of game. That's their first charge timeout of the half. I think they got a little bit confused here. Tennessee and Jeremy Pruitt throwing something different at Tua Tungabailoa. Take a look. As you mentioned, look at this. This is a unorthodox, right? Four and then six guys and then one guy deep. And I'm not so sure they knew on third and ten what they wanted to do, trying to check maybe at the line of scrimmage. And Jeremy Pruitt wins a head game. I mean, they are pulling out all the stops. Jeremy Pruitt put a lot into oh, yeah. this game plan here tonight. And he's trying to match wits with Nick Saban. Well, nobody knows Alabama, right, better than Jeremy Pruitt. It's only, a couple, only a couple years ago. Yeah, not, not only the defense, obviously. He knows all the signals on their defense, and all, but he also knows this offense. And, you know, he was here when Steve Sarkeesian was here, so knows him well. So they're going to have a few a few different looks. He knows he doesn't have the personnel to match with Bama, so he's got to do some, a couple different things throughout the course of the game. And here comes Mac Jones. Mac Jones, the backup quarterback, as Tunga Bailoa is attended to. Jones played in the first five games. The only game he didn't get into was last week against a and And with everybody playing back, it's a screen to Waddle on third and ten. And that backfires against Tennessee. It's a first down, Alabama, gain of 13. Well, an unbelievable first down, but let's go back. The, the, the lead here is to a tongue of I don't. I didn't see anything on that last sack when he went down, but let's go back and take another look. We know that he had the issues with his lower legs from a year ago, and it looked like that right ankle may have gotten rolled up. Not, not a good sign. Well, well, Steve, Tua Tungavailoa is walking with a little bit of a limp, and he did point to his ankle when talking to medical training staff. He is in the tent right now. 
keep us posted on that. Najee Harris takes a big hit at the line of scrimmage. Matthew Butler was the first man there for Tennessee. It's a gain of three on forward progress. So both quarterbacks, both starting quarterbacks have been taken out of the game for now. I don't think people realize how much the injuries last year affected Tua Tungavailoa late. And, you know, he told us he wasn't healthy until May. Literally until May. Think about that. And he, he said he gained a bunch of weight, like 13 pounds. He was up to 230 pounds and had to work to get it off. But he needed to take that time off and get back healthy. And that's the worst possible part of his body to be injured because that's what he was dealing with a year ago. Blitz up the middle. Tennyson dropped it. Jones laid it in perfectly. Tough night for the tight end so far. Well, I think that might have been tipped. It looked like uh, Crouch, the linebacker, 27, might have got a hand on that before it got into, into the tight end. But now Mac Jones, an opportunity for him. You know, he's only played in mop-up duty this season, so his first opportunity in the first half of the game, that's still relatively competitive. Bam has been perfect on third down conversions. Here's third and seven. Blitz coming. And Jones will be taken down. Cuevaris Couch. McCullough's there. Jalen McCullough, the man they call Tank. And Mac Jones is aware of that now. Well, why not bring a safety blitz when you've got Mac Jones, the new qu the quarterback, in, and he never sees it. He comes from about 10 yards off. That's plenty of time for Mac Jones to be able to diagnose this pressure. There's no excuse for not seeing that. I get it. You haven't had a whole lot of reps in practice during the course of the week, but that was an easy one. Short punt out. from Will Reichard. Well, that's Reichard who's been hurt. He's had a hip flexor Look at him. issue. He, he's yeah. in pain, too. Well, he's had, he's had this injury, this hip flexor, and that did not look good. It's a 33-yard. Uh, if you were going to come back out, if you're going to go get taped or something and come back out, you'd be in a, in a big hurry. And uh, that's not a great sign either that Riker going into 10. That's the true freshman punter who was already injured, did not play in the last two games due to a hip flexor injury. And off the poor punt, Tennessee takes over with excellent field position from their own 40-yard line. Jarrett Garantano, excellent protection. And throwing on the run. To Chandler out of the backfield for two made in the stop and the only reason Garantano is in the game because Brian Maurer took a shot Boy, the longer Tennessee kind of hangs around here in this game if they can get something here anything before halftime and, and be in this game going into half with what's transpired now with, with Tua being out of the game potentially Jeremy Pruitt would have to be Happy with that, but Garantano's got to pull the trigger here. He hasn't been able to push the ball down the field. The pass protection is there. You just have to make the throw. On the ground, here's Tim Jordan. Just shy of midfield, Matt Barry. Yeah, guys, things get interesting in Kansas and Texas. Carter Stanley after a Texas turnover finds Andrew Parchment. Great catch to the touchdown. That ties it at 40, but here comes Texas right back. Keontae Ingram. Up the gut, Texas with the 47-40 lead late in the fourth. Wow, big 40. time shootout in the Big 12. Kansas scored 40 points on Texas defense. You didn't see that coming, huh? Can't Young, did, huh? inexperienced, and injured. Yeah. We saw Texas a few weeks ago. Especially the secondary. Huh? Pressure. Garantano gets away. Now taken down from behind. Dropped by Shane Lee. He was lucky to hang on to the football. It's a loss of four. Typically when you design a pass play, you don't want two guys running into each other. But watch what happens right in the middle here. Jennings and the tight end run right into each other. And, you know, when you're, you're trying to resurrect a program, you got a, a backup quarterback in there. you got guys running into each other. You're on the road against Alabama in a third down situation with an opportunity to seize some control after their quarterback goes in the locker room, and you can't execute a simple crossing route with two of your receivers. Paxton Brooks on his second punt. And he shanks that one out of bounds. Now, again, some of that is keeping it away from Jalen Waddell. I get that. It's a 
eight yard punt. Well, it's been a rough night for Tua Tunga Bailoa. Threw the one interception early that led to seven points for the Vols, and now it's like a sprained ankle, and he's in the locker room. So Mac Jones remains in there at quarterback for Alabama. Minute 44 left. Bama has two timeouts. It's Harris. First through a seam out to the 30. The first down. Gain of 12 on the play. Clock stops for the first down. Now it winds as they spot it. Jones the throw and skipped it to Jerry Judy incomplete. Todd. At this point, you, you, you got to assume you're just trying to run the football here. I, I'm, I'm surprised they threw the ball on, the, on this last throw. You, you just want to get to halftime and regroup. Yeah, I hear you, Todd, but I don't know that I agree with you because uh, I think you're going to need Mac Jones in this game to win, and you're, you might need Mac backed Jones. backed up like this? Well, it's not backed up. It's a two-minute situation right before half. Get him into the flow of the game. Get him some rhythm because you're going to need him in the second half. If you don't trust him now, you send him the wrong message. Harris, the ball carrier, fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage. Why can't Mac Jones throw, throw he, the... Uh, he can. Listen, this kid's got enough talent. Slant. Okay. He's got enough talent. Uh, he just he skipped that one. That's all nerves. You, you got to shake it off. But uh, you need to show confidence in your quarterback. If you want him to play with confidence, then Steve Sarkeesian and, and Nick Saban have to show they have confidence in him. And when you go in a shell right before halftime, that's sending a clear message to your quarterback. Like they're doing right now. Yep. And Alabama will get the ball to start the second half. 40 seconds left. And everybody seems content to just get to the locker room here. Just get it snapped in time. Harris again on the ground. Najee Harris out to the 48-yard line, Matt Barry. Yeah, guys, coming up in the mod the halftime report. We'll check in on the wideout with Penn State and Michigan. That game kind of going back and forth. Plus, Wisconsin upset today on the road. And we'll go no huddle across the country. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway join me coming up on the Mazda halftime report. I will right, we'll see you soon. Alabama has used a timeout. Harris up to 67 yards rushing, has the two touchdowns, the rushing leader. Well, yeah, now you, you break a little one here and you get to midfield and you call a timeout. Now you, now you want to be aggressive, but I think it's interesting. Mac Jones is warming his arm up on the sideline over here. You know, he hasn't, hasn't had a whole lot of throws. He probably was cold on the sideline watching Tua and just needs to get that arm warmed up. He didn't like the way that hitch came out. And he's playing catch with Tua's younger brother, Talia Tungabailoa, who was the third string quarterback. Tonight's PlayStation player impact rating. You don't have to know the complicated formula. All you have to know is that Jerry Judy and Tua Tungabailoa have the highest rating possible in FBS. 99 is always a good thing. Reece. Got it. Those, those two guys are good, right? Good. Really we good. agree on that, Grease. Best of their game. <laughs> they both have had a physical game already. Still trying to figure out if he can get 100. But 99 is the best so far. Here's Jones to throw. Crossing to Harris underneath. With 20 seconds left, he's down to the 31 yard line. 17 ticks remaining. It's a gain of 21. Right, nice job of Mac Jones standing in there. He sees the crosser coming. He takes the hit and puts him in position, potentially get some points before halftime. One timeout left. Jones skips that off the grass, underthrowing Miller Forrestall, the tight end. Yeah. Mac Jones needs to, to step into his throws. And every, every time he misses, it's low, and it's because he's not transferring that weight from the back foot to the front foot. And a lot of that is nerves. And you're in the game for the first time in, a, in the first half here, and game's on the line. They need you to produce, and you just got to work that out. Going to take another shot here with seven seconds left. Get some more yardage. Forrest all able to catch that as Jones hit him in the numbers. Now that that should never happen. Had that take only one second off the clock too. 
Well, that should never happen. Like Tennessee and Jeremy Pruitt, they're, he's too good of a football coach to allow that to happen. You've got to defend the sideline uh, and not let them get out of bounds and get the extra five, six, seven yards. Here's Joseph Bullivis on to attempt a field goal. Just three for four this season on field goal attempts. This will be a 41 yard attempt. And Jeremy Pruitt's going to call a timeout. Timeout. Tennessee. It's the first time out of the half. This is the 30 second timeout. That's smart. He knows that Alabama has some kicking issues, right? There's a reason why a true freshman and Will Reichert was the starting kicker because Nick Saban didn't trust Bull of us from what happened a year ago where he missed six PATs and, and four field goals. Reichert is four of seven kicking and field goals this season. Yep. Again, he's dealing with the hip flexor. So it is Bull of us. Yeah, he missed six extra points last season. As a team, Alabama missed nine extra points last season. That was the most in the nation. Not only uh, did the loss of Tonga Vailoa affect the offense, but he also was the starting holder. So now you see Mac Jones is out there as a starting holder. So that's new for both of us, too. And Tua Tonga Vailoa is the holder, but he's in the locker room. So Mac Jones will hold now. And Tennessee will take another timeout. The wheels are spinning tonight, Grease. Hey, man, empty the bag. <laughs> Why not? Tennessee has one timeout remaining. <laughs> what do you think? You want to call take the last it. one? <laughs> Got to take it. Yeah, right? You can't take Come a home with you. Said empty the bag. <laughs> See now you're playing the game. Uh, Bull of us is thinking they're going to take the third time right, out. And right. Maybe now you don't do it. He's standing right next uh. to the lines in there. Oh, oh, come, on. <laughs> come on. Listen to the crowd. <laughs> take it. <laughs> There's Nick Saban's reaction. He's like. I taught him that. Uh, yeah, I, I know one person in this stadium knew the answer to whether he was going to take the third timeout, and it was Nick Saban. <laughs> <laughs> All these former Saban assistants are tired of hearing about that 0-18 record. Yep. Somebody's going to get him. Nick Saban probably wants to get in the locker room as fast as anybody to check on his quarterback. Got to come through this time. There are no more timeouts for Tennessee to take. Bolivas, after all of that, he missed it. Missed it to the left. And that's how the first half comes to an end in Tuscaloosa. Jeremy Pruitt emptied the bag, and it paid off. Three timeouts in a row. He knew... The questions of their kicking game for Alabama. Down to Molly. Coach, what is Tua Tonga Vailoa's status for the second half? Well, we don't really know. I, I was find up with the trainers as soon as we go inside. He's got a twisted ankle of some kind. What does your offense need to do if he's limited or can't go? Well, we got to trust Mac to do the job. We got good players. He needs to make plays and move the ball. I mean, obviously, you know, we messed it up in the red zone with the interception. So. You know, that was a big play in the game because it was really a f see him in your picture there as we take a look at our Modelo Gold Standard stats. Yeah, and I think this is the one that Alabama needs to, to be concerned about, especially now coming into the second half with a backup quarterback. They have got to find a consistency in the run game. This offensive line needs to come off the ball, and Najee Harris needs to make the reads. Here's Harris being pushed back inside the five. He'll get out to the six. Darrell Middleton, the stop, it's a loss of four. And Alabama made the change a week ago, from two weeks ago. Chris Owens, Landon Dickerson went to the center position, and they put Deontay Brown back at right guard. And it was successful a week ago. It hasn't been as successful tonight. That time, Dickerson got pushed back five yards into the backfield. Jones on the ground to Harris. Dances for a couple. 
down to Molly for the report everybody's been waiting for. Well, Steve, Nick Saban wasn't happy when I was waiting for him outside of his locker room. All he said was that Tua will not return. I do have it confirmed. They said he won't return with the lower body injury. And currently, Tua Tungavailoa is not out here on the sidelines. Thank you, Molly. Looked like an ankle, but we don't want to speculate. Again, on the sack from Greg Emerson. And it's third down and 10 from Bama's own nine-yard line. See how conservative they play it with Mac Jones. Off the blitz, set up the screen to Harris. And he'll stumble forward about to the 14. Another stop by Middleton. But it's a three and out for Alabama. The first time tonight. Yeah, and right off the bat, Jeremy Pruitt is fired up on his side of the field. You know that he told his defense coming out of halftime, get a stop, get a three and out. They've, they've got doubts in their backup quarterback. We get the ball back and we have an opportunity to go down and score and make this thing a ball game. And a new punter in the game for Alabama. That's Ty Pirine, number 99 in the program. Listen to the crowd roaring. Callaway the fair catch. It's a punt of 42 yards. <laughs> Biggest cheer of the night for the punter. <laughs> so we told you about Tua Tungabailoa. Only fair to point out that Brian Maurer the starting quarterback for Tennessee was knocked out of the game. And the worst part of that looked like was falling into his own offensive lineman at the end of the play. Mauro suffered a concussion last week, was in concussion protocol, and now he's back out of this game. First down and 10. Tennessee starts with excellent field position. And it's Ty Chandler across midfield and down the sideline. Forced out of bounds at the 30. And look at Pruitt running down the sideline with his running back after the gain of 25. He's fired up. He realizes this is an opportunity to seize control of momentum. Great block by the center here. That's Brandon Kennedy just gets up to the second level on Shane Lee, the linebacker. And that's what opens the hole. Brandon Kennedy, the Alabama transfer. Again, they run it right into that front of the Crimson Tide. That's the true freshman, D.J. Dale, for no gain. Well, D.J. Dale does not look like a true freshman. You see him there. I mean, do any of them? Not really, but this, <laughs> this guy is a man. He is difficult to move. He, he demands double-team blocks on just about every snap. Uh, he's going to be a stalwart for Nick Saban for a long time here in Tuscaloosa. Second down and 10. At the Alabama 30, Jared Garantano out of the shotgun. Garantano throwing, zipped it into Jawan Jennings, and I think he's going to be short of the first down. We'll see where they spot it. One of the things Nick Saban wants to do to try to combat these RPOs is drop Terrell Lewis. He's six foot five. Watch him try to look up the receiver, and he just gets the ball past the helmet of Lewis. Third down and one, Garantano on the quarterback sneak. And you can see Tennessee going quickly there to get the first down. Nick Saban's playing with a lot of youth on this defense. Four freshmen start in the base defense, and when they go to dime, they bring in Jordan Battle, and he's the fifth true freshman. They will have five on the field at times. That's a lot of youth to overcome. And it's receivers. right up the middle, too. Defensive tackles and inside linebackers. Trips to the left. And they run it to the right with Tim Jordan. Right in the middle, that stout Bama defensive line. It's a gain of two. Byron Young, one of those two freshmen, makes the stop. If I'm Jim Chaney, I, I'm going to think long and hard about running behind Trey Smith, the left guard. He's their best offensive lineman, their most uh, senior offensive lineman. And Jim Chaney, look at him. He's pounding the table. Listen, we got to run the football. Man to man across the board. Garantano to throw. Quarter back shoulder. And Callaway got a hand on it, but nothing else. Jared Maiden had the coverage. Maiden had the first half interception. Alabama's choosing to match up their linebacker, Christian Harris, 
on Jawan Jennings. If they do it again here in this situation, Jared Garantano has got to target him. They are fired up on that Tennessee sideline. So the coach is getting into it there. Here comes the blitz. Pressure. Garantano gets rid of it. It's caught by Jennings. Able to go up and bring it down for the first down. Carter on the coverage. Garantano says he there. took a shot to the mouth. Yeah, Garantano, he takes a shot. His helmet comes off, so he will have to come off the field. Remember, he's there's no Brian Maurer, so they're going to have to have another quarterback come on the field for this snap at a minimum. JT Shroud is the third string quarterback well, but it looks like they have no they have no quarterback out there right now but Jennings is going to take it maybe out of the Wildcat yep there's some leadership for you from the fifth year senior four to snap it they get it away and Jennings will run with it turn the corner and knocked out before he hits the goal line there is a flag down that could have been disastrous we'll see if they avoided that I think they're going to get Tim Jordan holding on the edge. The running back was out there exposed and looked like he had some cloth in his hand. Holding. Offense, number 64, 10-yard penalty. We play first down. Well, that's not Jordan. That's Wanye Morris, the left tackle. What a great effort there from Jawan Jennings. Here's Morris. Someone's going to have to get... Coach Pruitt at this point. He's losing his mind. That's a wild sideline tonight, that, Todd. It is. I, that, 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 I think they called that on the wrong guy. Wanye Morris was not holding there, but I think Tim Jordan was number nine based on what I could see in that replay. So Garantano is back in the lineup, puts the helmet back on. Third offensive holding call against Tennessee. Fake to Jordan. Garantano waits for it to develop. Had two receivers in the area, and it's incomplete. There is a flag down in front of the Bama bench down at about the 19-yard line. Tyler Bird was, I think, the intended target. Very legal formation. That's the signal there on Tennessee. Illegal formation. Offense. Five in the backfield. And penalties with speed. Second down. Tennessee with a, a golden opportunity here to get back in this football game. They get down in the in the red area and now they're self-destructing penalties on back-to-back -back plays. They have got to settle this thing down because this is their this is their opportunity. Second and goal from the 17. It's Jordan for two. Jennings the stop for Alabama. Well, and it's going to be Jennings. third and goal. Yeah, Anthony Jennings. You know, he's he is an outstanding football player. Watch him come up and then back underneath, and he makes Darnell Wright look silly. But Jennings is, you know, his, his coaching staff says he's not great or elite at any one thing, but he is very good at everything. He will have a long career at the next level because he's a solid football player. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Crowd starts to roar. Pressure's picked up. Garantano throwing. And it is juggled and dropped to the ground. Jennings juggled it. Jordan Battle, who comes into the dime spot, nearly had himself an interception in the end zone. They've been targeting this same matchup all night. Jawan Jennings on Shaheen Carter, the nickelback. That's where they want to go with the football. They're just trying to give Jennings an opportunity to go up and make a play in a 50-50 situation. Give Shaheen credit for being in position. Very similar to what took place in the first half. Tennessee got down to the bound of five penalties. The drive stalled out. Had to settle for a Samaglia field goal. And that's the same. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell. See how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using the hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. And I believe the Bama fans have already gotten the committee's attention. Pretty sure Molly's part of that committee. She's down on the field and hearing about it. Paxton Brooks will kick it away. 
Henry Ruggs from the goal line will run it out. Ruggs up the middle. Looks like he ran into his own guy and down to the 21 yard line. Should give him forward progress. They're going to spot at the 24. And that's where Alabama will take over. Up eight. Another opportunity for Mac Jones. First uh, drive after halftime, a three and out. And you see the production with Tua and since. And if you believe Nick Saban, he's not coming back. He's not walking through that door for this second half. This is Mac Jones's game. And I don't think 21 points necessarily is going to win this game. I know you've never been nervous before, Greece, but I have been. Like when? That, when was the last time? Mac, Mac looks like it. Yeah, he looks... Got to settle down. From the 24, he's going to come out throwing. Jones lost one, put some air on it. And Taylor, Alante Taylor, nearly intercepted it for Tennessee. The Vols will get a boost as Henry Toe Toe returns. The true freshman, very talented linebacker from Sacramento, is back in the game. He was called for targeting in the second half, thus missing the first half. I misspoke earlier. Daniel Batuli, who was ejected from this game for targeting in the first half, will miss the second half of this game and will be allowed to return to play at the start of next week. Tried the slant to Jerry Judy. Yeah, this is the route that, that has been so successful, and part of this is Mac Jones not having a whole lot of reps with Jerry Judy. The other part is give credit to Tennessee defensively. You see... The linebacker there, Daryl Taylor, just gets a little bit of a piece of Jerry Judy, and that sets off the timing with Mac Jones and an incompletion. Third down and 10. Jones, Blitz doesn't feel it, and it is off the fingertips of Harris. And Jones is down, and a flag comes in late. Very late as Mac Jones is picked up off the turf. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 19. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Daryl Taylor. Daryl Taylor has got to be better than that. You get an unbelievable opportunity, three and out, and then you, you do something that selfish. That, it's frustrating. It's, it's not the hit, Todd. It's not the hit. No. Let's, let's watch it. What does he do here at the end? Does he? No, that's that's not a foul. I'm sorry. I mean, that, he's just getting up. He's not doing anything to Mac Jones. He's not pushing him down. That is not a foul. Wow. I agree. He lingered a little long on top of him. He stayed on top of him, but that's I agree. That's not a foul. That's not a foul. I mean, let And that turns out to be a very big penalty huge. at this point in the game. Wow. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll be honest. Live watching down on the field, I thought it was. I thought it was a. I thought it was extended too long, and and he could have just stood up and walked away. Well, I know you. I don't know if you can see the monitor down there, Todd, but like he, he doesn't push him down. He's just getting up. Anyway, let the kids play. Second down and four. It's Harris. And it's going to bring up a third and two. Hey, Matt Austin, let's check in with you. I'm curious as to your opinion on that last play. Is that a personal foul? Yeah, Steve, I think it is. I disagree with Brian a little bit. I don't think he's just trying to get up. He's good. He's sending a message. He's shoving down with both hands, pushing it into the ground. Uh, I'm okay with the call. Different perspective. Yeah, listen, man, you agree to disagree. I've been in that position as a quarterback. That was not a foul. On third and two. Harris, the ball carrier, still on his feet in the Tennessee territory. Looked like nothing winds up being a 12-yard run by Najee Harris. Oh, watch the momentum change here, right? Tennessee felt like they got off the, the field. They got the hit on the quarterback, and, and they were going to get a punt situation. And now Alabama starting to, to come off the ball and run the football. That's the best way for them to take the pressure off Mac Jones. Would have been consecutive three and outs for Alabama. But the personal foul on the flag allows this drive to continue for the Crimson Tide. First down and 10. Good fake. Jones tees it up and completes. Able to hit Devontae Smith. Welcome back to the game. Devontae Smith, his first grab of the night. He took a big shot but hung on. Great anticipation here from Mac Jones. 
throwing this dig route. You got to release this ball on time before the safety comes up. It's well executed. Good stick by Jalen McCullough. Six minutes to play in the third in an eight-point game on a Saturday night in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Jones turns around, hands to Najee Harris. And that run game has really picked up here for Alabama. It's a game of nine. At a time where you think the Tennessee defense would really focus on the run game, with two out of the game. Here's Harris, down to the five. It's a gain of nine on the play. Najee Harris is over 100 yards. Alabama has brought in their backup center, Chris Owens. He's wearing number 84, and he's at a tight end position. They're in a heavy set. It's Harris, not that time, into the teeth of that Tennessee defense led by Darrell Middleton. But this is this is a, a change philosophically from Steve Sarkeesian and Nick Saban, knowing exactly what's happening in the game. There you see Chris Owens. Now he's been the starting center most of the year, and he got hurt. Normally number 79, he's wearing 84 so that they can use him as an extra tight end. And that's Evan Neal down on the field, the true freshman left guard. It's been a tough game tonight. It's been a physical game. Both teams feeling the effects. He's the most lethal Terminator ever created. He's at your authorized dealer today. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Evan Neal walking off the field. It's dapped up by Chris Owens. Big part of the running game for Alabama as we check out tonight's King of the Moment, brought to you by Burger King. Yeah, and it's been Najee Harris in the first half. He, he made some plays catching the football. Uh, but here in this drive, it's been on the ground. He's now over 100 yards rushing in this football game. And they're going to need him to finish this one out. They split out Mac Jones. And they throw to the end zone to Forrestal. It's caught. Slade Bolden hits Miller Forrestal in the end zone for the Alabama touchdown. Wow. Give credit to Steve Sarkeesian. He puts the wide receiver, the red shirt freshman, Slade Bolden, into the game, runs a little play action with Forrestal wide open in the middle of the field. Really well executed. You wonder if they had that drawn up with Tua during the week and still ran it with Mac Jones, knowing that you know Mac Jones probably hasn't had a whole lot of reps in the red zone throwing the football. It's a great call. You know what Slade Bolden played in high school, Greece? You know his position? Not quarterback. Still a locker room. He is out of his uniform. He's visibly limping, and it looks like he's favoring his left leg. Thank yeah. you, Molly. Saw the sack there by Greg Emerson in the first half. Yeah, you just, uh, you hate to see that, right? He went through so much of that a year ago, and to have a very similar looking injury, that's, a, that's tough. Tennessee's already lost their starting quarterback, Brian Maurer. And as Jared Garantano was throwing for Jawan Jennings, there is a flag down. Xavier McKinney on the coverage there. That's the first, only the first or second time I've mentioned McKinney's name. Yeah, McKinney's, uh, I think, their best player on defense. Pass interference, defense, number 15. 15 <laughs> yard penalty, automatic first down. They're calling this tight tonight. They're throwing a lot of flags. You know, he's, McKinney's looking back for the football. He has every right to that football, just like the receiver. And it looked, I think it looked worse than it, than it was because the receiver just fell down. But, uh, so the opposite will let him play. Yeah, let him play. Third defensive pass interference penalty against Alabama tonight. That's Eric Gray for a couple. Christian Harris the stop.
Those are the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Tunga Bailoa heading back to the Alabama locker room to visit with their son. Second down and six at the 42. Tennessee trailing by 15. Garantano on the run. Will pick up one as he scampers out of bounds. And will bring up a third down. Garantano, it seems like he has not been consistent in his reads in the run pass option game. He's been pulling the ball when, when he should have been given the ball there. And that time there's nobody open downfield. Uh, and he's just trying to, to get something out of nothing. Brings up a big third down here, but he needs to begin to make more consistent decisions in a run pass option game. Jeremy Pruitt put it on his quarterbacks. He said, with better quarterback play, we're four and two instead of two and four. Here's third down and five. Pressure up the middle. Garantano can't escape from that one. It's Terrell Lewis on the sack and a loss of eight on the play. Darnell Wright is a true freshman, 6'6", 330 pounds, and he's going to be a good player, but as a true freshman going up against Terrell Lewis, he just was not ready for that move, and Terrell Lewis is starting to look like the Terrell Lewis that Alabama fans had hoped for. Last week, two sacks against Texas A&M, and he is their best pass rusher in third down situations. Pro Football Focus had him on at 11 pressures a week ago. That, that's quite a game. Low snap for Joe Doyle this time. As Tennessee sort of alternates their punters. That one goes to 35. And the fair catch for Waddle. To Alabama's ball. Up 15 the third. <laughs> when you're over, overpaying, get it on eBay. It's here, the rut, and for the next two weeks, this is where you'll be. It's your season. So hurry to Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's for big savings on the gear you need from top brands. The Go Hunt sale is going on now. Because winning the next game starts at the end of this one. Recover better with Core Power, the official protein drink of Alabama athletics. One of the differences in the Alabama offense without Tua Tunga by low is you have a left-handed quarterback, now a right-handed quarterback. For a left-handed quarterback, his blind side is to the right. So you have to always account for the blind side there. Now with Mac Jones in the game, it's the opposite. And the offensive line needs to know it, especially Alex Leatherwood needs to know it because this is where Mac Jones is susceptible. Jeremy Pruitt's a good defensive coach. He's going to have his Tennessee defense on par with this and attacking from that side of the field. One of the slight differences between a lefty and a righty. Brian Robinson, the ball carrier, with Evan Neal back in the game for Alabama. And he is gang tackled out of bounds. Now there are some other differences as well. The way the ball spins, so the receivers have to adjust. So that's a real thing. Absolutely. Have you ever caught a lefty ball? No, I haven't caught many righty balls either, <laughs> but my point is for a, from a receiver perspective, I mean, the ball spins the other way. I get it. But why would that be harder to catch? There's what? not a single quarterback in the NFL who's a lefty right now. That, that's hard to believe. Here's Brian Robinson. Flag comes in. You get used to catching the ball when it comes in, the, the rotation of the ball. As a receiver, it's just human nature. You get used to it. And then when the ball comes in a different way, it's just different. Uh, I, don't, I wasn't a receiver, but I had those guys tell me, because right. I played with Chris Sims, okay? He was my backup. He was a lefty. I was a righty. Holding. Offense number 11. That penalty is declined. Holding. Offense number 74. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. So Joey Galloway, right? He was. He would, you should ask him back yeah. in the studio because he used to have I mean, to he's catch. He's still annoyed. <laughs> yeah, he, he would have to catch Chris's, but he was always upset. 
Maybe he just preferred Chris to you. Is that, is that possible? <laughs> yeah, it's entirely possible. So McShay did all the heavy lifting on this. The last NFL quarterback who was a lefty to throw a touchdown pass. You have to go back to 2015. Kellen Moore and Michael Vick. How about that? And the last two lefties to throw touchdown passes? Yes. Des Bryant and Kevin Byard. Kevin Byard's a safety for the Tennessee yeah. Titans. But there, it is amazing to me, and we talk about it every time we see Alabama because of 2 and he'll be in the NFL someplace next year. There has not been a, not even a third-string quarterback, not a practice squad left-handed quarterback in the NFL for years. By accident, you think one guy, one lefty quarterback would pop up in the league, and it, for some reason it hasn't happened. Yeah. Here's the right-handed Mac Jones. He runs righty as well. He's going to be short of the first down. <laughs> yeah, I think he, he didn't know whether he should go head first there and try to get the first down, and he decided to play it safe and went feet first and gave up the first down potentially. I think if he sticks his nose in here, he might be able to get that ball to the 40-yard line for a first down. You can tell he's thinking out there. He has a lot going on in his under his helmet. There's Ty Piran, the walk-on. To punt it away. And listen to the roar crowd from the is crowd. Pleased. It's amazing. Marquez Callaway on the far side. And it's Piran who lowers the shoulder. Wow, he starts making tackles here, too. That's when you know life is good. You're an Alabama fan, and you're worried about your punter. And that's the only thing you're worried about. Next week, the rivalry that takes back to 1887. It's Notre Dame and Michigan, 7.30 on ABC, and streaming live on the ESPN app. Got us to thinking. Oh, I don't boy. know if you heard, Greece was 3-0 all time against Ohio State. And who's that guy on the right? I don't recognize him. He's pretty good. Tommy? He's, he's, he's pretty good. Things have worked out for Tom Brady at the pro level. Pretty impressive. That's back when, you know, we used to play the Notre Dame rivalry every year, and then Notre Dame decided to take some time off, and I'm glad that they're back playing. Tim Jordan, the ball carrier. So Penn State beats Michigan tonight, 28-21, yeah, in that epic atmosphere, the whiteout in Happy Valley. Yeah, and a, and a tough tough loss for Jim Harbaugh. I mean, that's, that's a hard-fought game, and Shea Patterson doing the most that he can, but uh, Jim Harbaugh has not won the big game. And uh, that's a tough loss, and it's not going to get any easier next week. That'll do it for the third quarter. It's Alabama without Tua, up 15, going to the fourth. Get ready to start the fourth quarter. Molly, what's the latest? Well, Steve, there are reports on Twitter that Tua Tungavailoa went to the hospital in an ambulance. I just ran around outside the stadium, and a security guard told me he has since returned in the ambulance, and he limped back to the locker room. All right. We love the Twitterverse. They're going to go wildcat with Jawan Jennings to open up quarter number four. And he will run out of it and run right into the wall that is that Alabama defense led by Anthony Jennings. This is from Twitter for video. Wow. Hey, that was a quick ride to and from the hospital already. No, I no idea what that was about. Big third down here for Jared Garantano. You have to start making some plays in the money situations on the money downs. Looks like you're going to get man to man with two deep safeties. If you don't have an open receiver, your legs can get you the first down. Third and four. Bama really rushing three. Garantano completes to Callaway. He's across midfield. Patrick Satan dragged him down after the game of 13. First down, Vols. Yeah, two-score game here. Tennessee is in this ball game in the fourth quarter. That's the that's the headline. And can they make the plays that they need to from the quarterback position to win this football game? It has to start here. Tennessee's defense has done their part. First down and 10 on the ground. Tim Jordan right up the middle. It's a gain of five. 
and they're starting to, to run behind big Trey Smith, the left guard. So good to see him out on the football field. Everything he's been through, the injuries and, and the blood clots, to see him out here is just really uh, great to see this young man competing on the football field. He's working on his own practice schedule throughout the week, and that works for him, and he's good enough in the games to get it done. The reigning SEC co-offensive lineman of the week, second down and five. Again, it's on the ground. Back to the line of scrimmage. Jennings, the stop there, was last week's game against Mississippi State. The Bulldogs closed the gap, and Tennessee went on a 91-yard scoring trip drive, imposing their will, led by that running game a week ago. But the opponent tonight is vastly different. An opportunity here, third down, find Jawan Jennings. He's right here lined up, and this is who they've been trying to match him up on, Shaheen Carter. That's Jennings in motion. Garantano able to complete the Chandler who leaked out of the backfield for the first down, a gain of eight. Really nice play design from Jim Chaney. On a big third down, pull out your wrinkle. You're just going to get the back coming in here in the flat. You get the eye candy with your best player going the opposite direction. And you're trying to make these young inside linebackers for Alabama, two true freshmen, and that's Markel Benton, read misdirection in the backfield. Here's Chandler to the right and stopped for a loss. Christian Harris with a big stick there for Fallon. Yeah, Christian Harris comes up a, a little bit gimpy holding his left arm. We know the injuries to Josh McMillan, Dylan Moses. They've lost LeBron Ray off this defensive line, had surgery. They cannot afford to have any more injuries at the linebacker position. Second and 11, the Alabama 35. Darnell Wright saw the start. flinch. Offense number 72. Five yard penalty, second down. Might be the third time that Wright's been flagged tonight. That's the 12th penalty on Tennessee. When you come on the road in this environment against the number one team in the And you're still in the game. It's a 15 point game. Yeah. And all those penalties. And the critical penalty will be the personal foul. That led, kept the drive alive, led to a touchdown. On oh, Daryl Taylor, yeah, which I, I don't think was a foul. Otherwise, would have been three consecutive three and outs with Alabama on offense. Ten of the 12 penalties accepted against Tennessee have been on offense. Garantano underneath. With Dominic Wood Anderson for the grab. Give him about six there. That's third down. He brings up the third third down of this drive. Jim Chaney has reached into his bag of tricks the first two times. Garantano has executed him. Does he have one more in him? And you got to wonder if they don't get the first down here. Four down territory. Four yeah, down Brian, down. this has got to be two down territory, right? Yep. yep. Ty Chandler, the body your, bottom of your screen. Only now is he covered up by McKinney. Bama rushing five. Garantano will take a shot for Callaway. Under throw to the flag comes in late on Sertan. I don't know if that was supposed to be back shoulder or a poor throw, but it draws That's the penalty defense. marker. Defense, number two, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Second pass interference against Sertan. Yeah, I'm standing just a few yards away, and it was obvious. I mean, if it wasn't pass interference, it was holding. Sertan got in a bad position. The ball was up, and he, instead of turning around and looking for the ball, he just started to grab on. Yeah, Todd, I, that's the fourth defensive pass interference on Alabama. I think it's the second on Sertan. He's too good of a player to be that grabby. You got to know better. Here's Tim Jordan. Down to the 10-yard line. Sertan and Diggs have been in great position. All, they are rarely out of position. They're always running stride for stride with receivers. They just need to play the football. That one was a little bit tough because it was grossly underthrown, and the receivers taught to fight back through the defender and draw the pass interference. 
Second and two. Here's Tim Jordan turning the corner, lowers the shoulder, and he's banged out at the two by McKinney. We've been talking a lot about Darnell Wright uh, being abused in, in pass pro situations, but this time watch him come off the ball and just run block on Chris Allen. Hey, Tennessee having their way here with Alabama on this drive. And it's first and goal. Back in the Wildcat with Jordan. Going to try to run for it. And they'll just get back to the line of scrimmage. D.J. Dale was there. They flanked Garantano out. Try to catch this Bama defense by surprise. I really like when they had Juwan Jennings uh, in the Wildcat. You know, he scored down here the last time they were inside the red zone. It was only called back because of the holding call. But I like his speed to the perimeter from the Wildcat. Darren Tano back in there. That's Jordan to his right. Gives it to him. Anthony Jennings, the stop, gain of one. Well, you see the, the struggle for Jim Chaney and Jeremy Pruitt. They do not want to put the ball in Jared Garantano's hands down here to throw the football. It's tight windows. The, it's very difficult to find open receivers when the field is constricted. They really want to run this football in, but they can't just turn around and hand it inside the uh, tackles. They've got to be creative. 13th play of this drive upcoming. Crouch is in. As the blocking back down to the goal line, going to be stopped short. No decision here yeah. on fourth and what should be inches. The only decision is what are you going to run? You, yes. you, you, right. <laughs> you, know, you run, you pass. They're going quick. Whatever here. they're going to do, they're going to do it quickly. Yep. Quarterback yep. sneak. Garantano tried to get there, and the ball comes out. Trayvon Diggs running down the sideline. Trayvon Diggs, nobody's going to catch him. There are no flags. This will be a 100-yard scoop and score for Alabama. And a stunning turn of events here in Tuscaloosa. Jeremy Pruitt was beside himself. They call the hurry up quarterback sneak. Garantano decides to go up and over. You don't typically see that, but when you extend that football, now obviously it's fourth down. So if you fumble it, not a huge deal. You got to get in the end zone, but you're not expecting Diggs to pick that ball up and run it back 100 yards for a touchdown. Garantano's trying to make a play. And he's getting an earful from his head coach. And all the way down at the other end, Bull of Hassan for the extra point. And boots it through. <laughs> On his third Saturday of October, Jeremy Tano can't get over. Jeremy Pruitt has been beside himself pretty much all season about Garantano and the way that he's not protected the football and grabs the face mask of Garantano. Not happy, but they're happy on that side. 120 years ago, Christopher Mullen's grandparents came here from Ireland to build a better life. All they ever hoped for was to be given a fighting chance. A chance that forged a path to where he stands today. We all have an immigrant story, which is why Modelo is partnering with the International Rescue Committee, giving a fighting chance to refugees, immigrants, and Americans in need. Because it doesn't matter where we come from, it matters what we're made of. I am on a journey to help people find time to relax. Are you ready for the journey, Elizabeth? How did you get in here anyway? The cat flap. That makes sense. Relax with the real ginger taste of Canada Dry. With Advil, you have power over pain, so the whole world looks different. 
the unbeatable strength of Advil. What pain? In 1979, Jiffy Lube changed everything by providing the first convenient oil change service. Seriously. Four yeah. decades later, Jiffy is changing everything again, offering services that are fast and convenient using manufacturer recommendations. Jiffy Lube, you can do more in a Jiffy. No matter how you define your family or classify... Out of bounds. At about the 25-yard line. Take a closer look. There's that foot, the left foot out of bounds. So everybody in the building knew that play was coming, right? You speed right. up to go fast. We see it all the time. The quarterback just wants to reach over with the ball and, and break the plane. But yes, there was no chance of success as Lee snuffed it out. For Tennessee, that's a 14-play drive down to the goal line. And now they and wind up not only not scoring, but giving up seven more. Well, they took Garantano out, and now he's got JT Shroud in the game. On the ground, Eric Gray. Now you take Garantano out of this game, and you know he he was making some plays. Granted, he's he's made some mistakes as well. Uh, but now he's out of this game, and you got to wonder the relationship between Jeremy Pruitt, the way he just undressed Garantano, uh, that one might not be salvageable. I just don't see the benefit of it. Of what? Of uh, of undressing your quarterback yeah. on a play that you you called right. Take some responsibility. And know? the tug on the face mask will be discussed, yeah. even if it was a gentle tug. Just don't see that anymore. Knocked away by Trayvon Diggs. We just ran 100 yards coast to coast for that last Alabama touchdown. Uh, Josh Palmer is their speed receiver, their big play guy down the field. He was beyond Diggs there. He was open. If Shrout was able to get that ball another five yards downfield, that was a touchdown. And Shrout is known for having a rocket arm. Redshirt freshman from Santa Clarita, California. Balls down to their third quarterback for a variety of reasons here tonight. Mauer shaken up, injured again. And Garantano yet. Okay. Offense number 12. And that's Five what you're going to get. You get down to your third string quarterback. You know, the only thing. Take a look at our Zaxby's play. The only thing I can think of here, okay? Uh, is if there was a play call and, and Garantano decided that I'm just going to go rogue and hurry up and call my own number. Be like, the hero. Right. That, that would lead to, that would make sense to lead to a, a situation that you saw from Jeremy Pruitt. Shrout is going to be taken down. It's Terrell Lewis. Drops him back at the 15-yard line. Loss of 15 on the play. And... What a great spin move from Lewis. I mean, that's God. Lewis when he's healthy, man. Right? He's one of the best outside edge rushers in all of college football. They're going to need him, Todd. Right? With the LSU game coming up, they're going to need pass rush on the outside with no Jennings question. and with Lewis because they just have it. They don't have the interior pass rush guy like Quinnen Williams or Jonathan Allen. They need to create that pressure from the edges. Lewis just returned from the knee injury last week against A&M. They had the bye week prior to that. The fully unleashed sacked Tua Tungo Bailoa in the second quarter. Sending Tua to the locker room. And maybe the hospital, although he's back. Two 14-point swings tonight from turnovers at the goal line. This is one of the many developing stories here tonight. Let's go back and take a look at that touchdown. You know, I, I mentioned that it might have been a run play and Garantano just went rogue. I think it actually was because when you watch the left uh, left guard, Trey Smith, he pulls out. See, he pulls out and kicks out the, the defense. That was a running play and Garantano just went rogue and decided to, to try to punch that ball over himself. I think that's why Jeremy Pruitt was so hot 
on the sideline. So if that is the fact, then you're okay with the Pruitt reaction other than the I, tug on the face mask. I don't like no, I don't like a coach ever touching a player's face mask. I'm just trying to tell you why Jeremy Pruitt was so hot. That was a run play called, and Garantano just decided to try it himself. Try to be the hero. Tennessee postgame press conference will be very interesting tonight. Brian Robinson, the ball carrier, down to the 20 yard line. Four and a half to play here in the game. Because a lot of times we're up here and we're watching coaches and they, they, they react and they get hot and we don't necessarily know everything that's going on, but just by watching the way that the, the rest of the offense reacted. If you're running a quarterback sneak, the left guard's not pulling out and kicking out, right? He's coming down. He would have come down on Shane Lee. He wouldn't have been free to hit the quarterback. And so I think uh, that's what made him so hot. <laughs> Instead of the big toaster, it's the big, the big humidor. <laughs> Did you get me one? We got you one. Okay. It's a tradition, by the way. A tradition like no other. Just saw Molly lighting up there for a Robinson. second. Has the first down yardage. Tradition's been going on in this rivalry that's played on the third Saturday of October, the 102nd meeting, in which the winner gets to light up and smoke a cigar. Tennessee alum and longtime Alabama trainer Jim Goostry is credited with starting the victory cigar tradition in 1961 when he handed out post-game cigars in the battle locker room. Brian Robinson. The ball carrier. And there are many famous photos of the locker rooms. And Nick Saban was talking about it. Tua was talking about it as well. You go in the locker room. And He's not a fan. Clouds of smoke. No. Tua was not a fan. Uh, I, I, and I don't know. These guys. How much fun is that, right? Yeah, so Jalen Hurts. Butch Jones and Chris Owens. There's Nick and Derek Henry. Yeah. I never see Nick with the, with the cigar in his mouth lit. Like, right. I think I've seen one in there, but it wasn't lit. I, I think it's more ceremonial. There are friends from R&R <laughs> &R Cigar. Yeah, those guys. Very hospitable. They do a lot of business uh, this, this yes, weekend. this weekend. <laughs> and so apparently the players have to buy their own cigars. Right. Plus the school can't buy anything for them. We know all about that with the NCAA. It's harmless, right? It's harmless. There's tradition been going on a long time, since, like you said, since 61. And uh, now all the fans get into it as well. There is an NCAA ban on tobacco in the locker room. So the winning team will be forced to self-report the NCAA violation and, and hope for a slap on the wrist. Can't Kevin trust Molly, though. Okay. Yeah, I thought I saw Molly in the stands lighting up already. She's a big, she's a big cigar smoker. Steve, I've been hanging out with you a little too long, buddy. <laughs> hey, you should hang out with Melrose. <laughs> Did you see the? There was one girl with the, her, her shirt was over her nose. She just can't take it right. anymore. <laughs> I guess if you degrees under smoky skies here in Tuscaloosa, 29 seconds left. The top right crimson tide. Up 35 to 13. Scott Van Pelt is standing by with his version of Sports Center. Lots of questions related to a tungle by Loa will need to be answered. Probably not tonight, but this week. Arkansas comes calling on Alabama next Saturday night here. Then it's a bye week. And then it's the LSU game here on November the 9th. Jeremy Pruitt's postgame press coverage will be interesting as well. That's the story. Alabama able to win. 
And Nick Saban goes to 19-0 against his former assistants. Tennessee hung around for as long as they could. For Todd McShay, Molly McGrath, Brian Greasy, and our entire crew, I'm Steve Lee. Send the time for Scott.